Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition's top stories. The government of St. Lucia to enact legislation to facilitate its digital transformation agenda. Banana farmers received some much-needed assistance from the Taiwanese Technical Mission. And the Ministry of Health and Wellness receives a donation of reusable face masks from the Sandals Foundation. The government of St. Lucia remains committed to the digitization of the public service with the recent launch of St. Lucia's digital integrated e-services platform and online one-stop government shop. The platform is geared towards enhancing the government service delivery to citizens, businesses, investors and other governments. DigiGov is designed to aggregate 154 services across nine ministries and 13 government agencies to facilitate online applications, payment and to monitor progress of government services anywhere, anytime. The Minister for Transport indicated that in order to facilitate the government's digital transformation agenda, key legislation must be enacted. A modern and responsive legal regulatory framework is paramount to the success of the digital transformation agenda. Minister for Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation, Honorable Guy Joseph, indicated that as the government seeks to streamline public service processes through the use of ICT, it is necessary to ensure that the business climate in St. Lucia has the necessary legal and regulatory support to facilitate a fair and efficient public service delivery. The government has begun this process with the partial commencement of the Electronic Transaction Act No. 16 of 2011, which came into effect on the 25th of June 2020. The minister indicated that the government is also working towards the partial commencement of the Data Protection Act of 2011, as it is another key piece of legislation to support the implementation of the DigiGov platform. A total of $110,650 have been collected from the DigiGov platform since it went live on the 25th of June 2020, and these revenues are going into the government's consolidated fund. As of the 19th of June, we had 167 persons registered on the platform. As of the 17th of July, which is just a little less than a month, we have 753 persons registered on the DigiGov platform and accessing services. So far, Mr. Speaker, 257 people who use the platform made payments coming to the counter at the ministry a total of $71,475, and online payments at Bank of St. Lucia, 145 persons made online payments, totaling $39,175. In August 2020, more services are to be added, including applications for driver's license, learner's permits, issue of provisional driver's license, renewal of learner's permits, registration for driver's practical and theory tests, and renewal of driver's licenses, to name a few. Also in August, under Phase 3 of the project, applications of Omnibus Endorsement, Omnibus Learner's Permit, Renewal of Omnibus Learner's Permit, Registration of Omnibus Driver's Practical and Theory Tests. Minister Honorable Joseph explained that since the launch of the platform, individuals applying for renewal of replacement driver's licenses have been able to receive their licenses in a three to five day period with an email or text notification that it was ready for collection. The transport minister added that a number of steps have been taken to facilitate the quickest delivery of service, including the establishment of an express line at the Department of Transport. The division is now offering a service of online to the public. These services are now available 24-7, making it easier and more convenient for persons to, accept the, to access the services and thus reducing the processing time. There are two services that are currently online, as we have already 
the replacement, indicated the replacement of driver's license. The division has service bureau agents on the floor facilitating the process of online applications and processing of payments using debit cards for renewal and replacement. So you can fill it out online and you can go to the ministry in person. There will be an agent to just swipe your card if you don't pay from your card at home or at another institution. The minister indicated that additional services are to become available on the DigiGov platform in November 2020 and February 2021 as the project is being implemented using a two-year 2020 to 2021 phased approach. Citizens are expected to have online access to 154 services, the ability to apply, pay, monitor and track transactions, ask or address queries with the click of a button by the end of December 2021. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Director of the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO, Dr. Carissa Etienne, is urging the countries of the Americas and the Caribbean region not to let their guard down as they seek to reopen their borders. Citing spikes in COVID-19 cases in several countries, Dr. Etienne indicated that countries must avoid thinking that they must make a choice between reopening economies and protecting the health and well-being of their people. The director noted that there is a new issue emerging where countries' health services are being disrupted as health workers are redirected to care for COVID-19 patients and people hesitate to seek routine care due to fears of infection and global supply chains of medicines and equipment are strained. Within every country in our region, health workers are being redirected to care for the influx of COVID-19 patients. Many of them have gotten sick themselves as they tend to those in need. And without doctors and nurses available to offer other essential services at the first level of care, such as pregnancy-related care and management of chronic conditions like diabetes or infectious diseases, such as HIV, TB, and malaria, these services are severely disrupted or worse yet, halted entirely. At the same time, patients who are sick or who think they might be sick are hesitant to seek care for fear of COVID-19 infection or because transportation disruptions and lockdowns have made it harder to reach their local clinics. Some may even assume that care is not available and postpone the help they need, often worsening their health situation. Additionally, our clinics and hospitals are still struggling to stock their shelves with the medicines and personal protective equipment that they need, as the pandemic has strained global supply chains and slowed global trade. The director asserted that a prolonged response to the pandemic must include provision of other essential life-saving services. PAHO is calling on countries to adapt to this new situation by re-engineering how essential care is delivered and investing in the first level of care using telemedicine, home visits, and community outreach programs to support vulnerable populations. Countries must adapt and commit to simultaneously providing these essential primary care services while at the same time mitigating the effects of COVID-19. Again, this is not an either or choice. Rather, governments must strike that careful balance for public health. National leadership must create the pathway for the future. Over the last few months, PAHO has shared best practices and worked hand in hand with governments to make adjustments, whether big or small, to be able to do just that. Director of PAHO, Dr. Carissa, ATN. Community members in need around the island to be provided with free protective gear aimed at reducing the spread of COVID-19. More in this report from Funnel Neptune. The Ministry of Health and Wellness recently received the donation of reusable masks from the Sandals Foundation to assist community members with maintaining and adhering to the protocols for managing COVID-19. 
The reusable masks will be made available at various wellness centers around the island and will be distributed to people who have limited or no access to masks. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belma George expressed heartfelt gratitude to the Sanders Foundation for the donation and says it will play a significant part in protecting the health of our citizens during this COVID-19 pandemic. Our teams within the community have been indicating that especially at the level of community there's a lack of adherence to the use of face masks and the, the foundation has taken up in a very proactive measure instead of just complaining about it to provide us with support to reduce this possible um, problem. So by providing us with um, 1,500 um, face masks will now be able to work at the level of the community and to provide face masks to them um, free of charge because of this donation and to support and to strengthen the use of masks at the level of the community. Public Relations Manager of Sanders Grand, Judy D. Tuville, says the foundation is dedicated to making the health of the community a priority and responding to the situation of COVID-19 in St. Lucia. Today we're looking at our assistance through, I want to say, community. And the foundation has risen to every occasion, I suppose I want to say, because in times of need, in times of natural disaster, and in this disaster, certainly we want to assist the process as well of helping people to meet and maintain the protocols that will assist in saving lives. The Sanders Foundation made a donation of 1,500 masks valued at 10,000 EC dollars. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. The Taiwanese Technical Mission through the Banana Productivity Improvement Project is assisting banana farmers as they continue to battle several challenges impeding their productivity. Anisia Antoine tells us more. The Taiwanese Technical Mission through the Banana Productivity Improvement Project, BPIP, has been improving farmers' productivity and revitalizing the banana industry in St. Lucia with a view of restoring the confidence of the farmers following the outbreak of the black cicatoka disease. With domestic banana production being negatively impacted due to the COVID-19 pandemic and further compounded by the dry spell, the government of St. Lucia, through the BPIP, has been assisting farmers with the upkeep of their plantations. Officer attached to the Banana Productivity Improvement Unit, Elkana Janki, explained that approximately 12,000 litres of oil and 9,000 bags of fertilizer have been distributed to farmers to date. The government, through the, the, the BPIP, have provided the support to farmers with regards to one treatment of fertilizer one application of fertilizer at two 50 kg bags per acre or four 25 kg bags per acre, mm -hmm. along with one treatment of oil fungicide mix for the control of black cigar token. Okay. And, and, and that, that is free. Uh -huh. However, in order for the farmers to be qualified for the support, the farms must be in um, condition. You, have, you must rehabilitate it if the farm is abandoned or semi abandoned. You have to clean it up, and the farm must be at, at you know, a level that, to show that you're in, in production. Crop Protection Officer in the Ministry of Agriculture, Cletus Alexander, explained that the government of St. Lucia adopted an integrated approach to control the spread of the black cicatoka disease. What you have realized is that the use of oil alone will not sufficiently control black cicatoka for you. Now, globally what is happening, as you have the... the, the, the the changing climate, the increasing temperature. On my observation, you realize that normally during the dry season, you have less moisture, so the, it's a fungus. So normally in the dry season, you don't have problem with fungal diseases. Now, the oil, a lot of people believe, well, the oil is a fungicide. Now, when, when you have fungicide, fungicide means well, it's going to kill the fungicide. The fungus. But, right, the, but the oil is not a fungicide. The oil is like a fungistat. It will sort of reduce the spread of the organism on the leaves. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said, in the dry season, 
it's not a problem because high temperature, the fungus is under control. But as you approach the rainy season, that is where it's a problem because leaf wetness is a critical factor in the development of the fungus. According to the agriculture officials, another infestation presently plaguing the domestic banana plantations is the millibug. This type of insect can cause tip growth distortion and death, as well as premature leaf and fruit drop. The BPIP has also been taking measures to prevent and control the spread of banana millibugs. When we realized that we had an upsurge in the level of millibug in, 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 in the fields, we, what we did, we, our officers went ahead and we had farm clinics to sensitize the farmers on the situation and what can be done to control or to manage the levels of millibug in the fruits. So we had these clinics throughout the island. Um, there was also a, a, a small video that was, that was produced by one of our officers to demonstrate to the farmers how to process the fruit especially if millibug is, is, is present. The agriculture officials reaffirmed the government of St. Lucia's commitment to improving the infrastructure of banana cultivation and farmer cultivation management skills. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, Wasco. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquiol. Monsieur Tarjanel, Monsieur Madame Department, Kenny West Cosability, Performation à Gouvernement Sadlissi, GIS, et Television National Paya NTN, Capositou Nouvelle Aquiol. Wizardo, Primus Hutchinson. A peu près 114 personnes ont trouvé l'opportunité pour acheter un morceau de terrain à la fac choisie pour bâtir un cahier résident. Nous avons eu une cérémonie mercredi le 6 août. Le Premier ministre honorable Alan Chasney et l'autre ministre du gouvernement, assemblé par les représentatifs pour choisir et salter le honorable Bradley Felix, ont assemblé en grande invitation pour bâtir ce cahier. Selon honorable Bradley Felix, le grand développement de c'est yon qui pas seulement qui a un bénéfice à Jean Choisey, mais plus de ça qui a encouragé un grand business pour établir un pouvoir salaire. Nous avons un um, projet comme ça qui a fait en place développé, en, en place qui a fait plus riche. Ok, donc so, um, c'est un bail, mais bien content qui a été fait, et que c'est comme un bénéfice pour 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 place. Donc ah ouais, c'est une belle place. On est plutôt là, on est la mer là, avec la nuit en place qui descend dans les beaches là juste là. Et, I mean, it's a real bell blast. You know, it's not a shy development car where it's a school, a car school. Regardez, place là, c'est un bel. Le représentatif là déclaré que le premier ministre Chasney crié à son jeune choisi pour vite prendre l'avantage de ça. C'est faux écouter parce que j'ai trouvé plusieurs appels à l'autre monde de l'autre pays qui ont intéressé pour ouvrir l'application. C'est pour ça que les PM l'ont dit, fais vite, ils savent ça, ils ne peuvent pas parler. En shy monde. Et on a dit ça, c'est Jean Choisey qui nous voulait mettre premier. Euh, et comment ça, Jean Choisey Puis um, Jean Choisey qui a été l'autre pays, il a tout à intéressé à dire. Donc, so, mon cas, il faut faire vite et venir um, uh, mettre l'application. Puis, ma quoi, il a été. Un parmi l'autre ministre qui a adressé, c'était le premier ministre Honorable Alan Chasney, le ministre des Affaires et Développement Économique Honorable Guy Joseph, et le chairman Invest, Saint Lucia Pinkley Francis. En parlant de ça, il y a un représentatif du Parlement pour choisir un temps passé qui a fait un grand appel pour la génération neuf en choisir pour profiter de l'avantage de ça pour vite, le plus vite que possible. M. Brian Charles, qui aussi est aussi chef conseil pour pouvoir choisir, a fait un plein en faveur de la jeunesse 
pour ni saki sa yo même en dit qu'à dépend seulement à son propriétaire la famille en choisir nous ni un problème côté ouais tout le monde majorité tient qu'il a c'est tes familles et tout jeune maman mais qu'elle est venue quoi à chanter manière pour faire un petit tout en tout cas en les tes familles bon tes familles c'est pas y ont qu'on ne va couper en anglais on investment puis c'est laisser sur tes familles ou pas ça servir pour faire pièce de pièce développement en seul ça on y en laisse un logement à dormir tous ensemble et on y tout seul mais je dis avec ça nous avec café ici là là ça qu'a bail j'en choisir ça qu'a bail génération en cavinier on opportunité pour ni un morceau en cette liste qui ça y est un morceau y est quoi ça servi qu'on y investment un morceau y est quoi ça servi avec aller la banque je crois que ça a joué sur l'école. Je crois que ça a attendu pour les gens qui sont qui, qui malades. Je crois que ça fait tout différent bagaille. Et puis, mon so, il a été ça. Donc, quand nous attendons l'année prochaine, en route, il y a un sang. Mon so, en l'autre qui a développé. Et avec un encouragé, c'est les jeunes qui ont fait ça. J'en choisis, ça qui est dehors, ça qui est de choisir. Pour profiter de l'occasion. En parce que c'est ça qui a mené l'économie au devant et l'économie place la même devant. Le ministère de la Santé a pris action vite à ce moment-là pour te recevoir un radio bac en cette ci Ça, c'était mardi le 28 juillet, côté un cette-lécien qui était retourné à pays la sortie de l'Angleterre, qui a visité l'institution pour trouver un service institution Le ministère n'a pas perdu la cap et informer la police concernant la situation. À son investigation, il a découvert qu'il a tenu plusieurs offenses, par exemple, pour qu'il quitte Kaila Diwan Quarantine, pour qu'il présente des informations qu'il faut pour les officiers de santé pays, particulièrement concernant les mots qui ont été restés en Kaila. Pour pour ça, il a dévidé avec tout l'autre résident qui était à Kaila, qui a trouvé un transfert pour une institution gouvernement pour quarantine pour 14 jours. Le ministère de santé félicite la police pour qu'il prenne action si tellement vite. Le chef officier médical, Dr. Sharon Belma George, qui a fait le public la comprendre que ce n'est pas parce qu'il y a une application pour quarantine à Kayo pour qu'il y ait un cas qui a été approuvé automatiquement. Il y a pour inspirer la confirmation du ministère de santé et si l'application a été approuvée, on doit opérer en bas de ce protocole. Le chef officier médical a dit aussi n'importe quel étranger qui a entré en pays, ni pour montrer qu'il ont été pris un test qui est négatif 7 jours avant de voyager. Pour les passagers qui ont voyagé dans le pays qui a un arrangement bubble, pas ni pour entrer en quarantaine, mais qu'ils ont trouvé testé les rivières cette ci Le ministère de Santé a créé à ce public là pour rapporter personne qui était supposé en quarantaine et qui a allé contre ces règles qui sont en place. Mon sa téléphone souhaite 468-5318 et bien 468-5318. 5, 3, 4, 9. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trouvé une nouvelle. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour une invitation. Pour que je puisse vous considérer comme vous avez la vie, nous avons une autre nouvelle. À quoi vous avez Ça, c'est le mon vieux président. Merci à Pearl Primus. Et c'est le moment de nous à la fin de NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am General Norville.